Blau Beast. No. Flatis. I think you're uh, Flatis. Blue Beast. Flautis. Flatist. Flatist. why Filipinos mispronounce a lot of English words, making Philippine English a bit strange to the ears of foreign observers. I would like to thank the following friends who almost always watch my premiere in its replay. Some follow me on Facebook and share my videos. Alden Ray Caballo, Ati Ami 09 channel, B page, Bill G the production with Ako si Kuya Brad, Brad the Great, Florin Agosto, Lucia Castillo, Brad TVB, Chorus Biado, Debra Du, Diane and Sean Adventure, Daijen Vlog, Amy Clare's Vlog, Espanyolang Hilao, Eta Cued, Familia de la Cruz, Git Carino, Grifter TV, Juan Family, Iwa Son, It's Me Argasi, It's Me Chong, Jen Warai, Karin TV, Kevin Crew, Kila is Life 29, Kidden Lover Bisha, Lord's Vlog with Ati Lords and Twinly Lords, Lucy Pagalan, Millennial Vlog, Mia Sampagita, Gracias Senora, Mia Sampagita, Gracias Senora, Osasogi Oronoa TV, Pinoy Teens Journey USA, Raquel Valiar, Risa TV, Sally Sonico, Susie Jane Live in UK, Tana Gonzalez, Jacahana Family, Tito Juvert TV, Twander Boy, Big Bars Migo, Virgo Girl of Italy, Grazie Sorella, and all those I have not yet mentioned. Just keep on watching my premiere and you will be given a big shout out. Please subscribe to these channels uh, because uh, they have very amazing and amusing content and they are very supportive. I would like to thank also to Dr. Sheila Simat, the editor of my book and vlog, Dr. Mila Isles of Laguna University for using my materials in her classes on linguistic and language acquisition learning. My former professor, Professor Sinai Dakabangon for following me on Facebook. My cousin Casey Rivera, merci beaucoup pour votre soutien. Maria Isabel Velasco and Juliet Bolima. Also to teacher Joy Fiecas of the National Orthopedic Hospital. Leia Cahan Lopiga for recommending my videos to her children during the pandemic. All my followers and supporters. A lady from Cordillera region asked me to greet her in Spanish. Saludos también a un maestra de la región de Cordillera que enseña español. Ella también escribió un libro en español. Señora Jansen Palgue, a.k.a. The Explorer. Muchas gracias, señora. Why do Filipinos mispronounce a lot of English words? 
Pronunciation is one of the most important factors that makes our speech clear, understandable, and worth listening to. But sad to say that oftentimes we commit a lot of mistakes in pronouncing English words. What causes wrong pronunciation? In this video, I will highlight the top 5 reasons for mispronunciation. First, listen to the conversation and pay attention to the words you think hard to pronounce. Phonetic transcription of the conversation using the, the standard international phonetic alphabet is provided for you. What do you prepare to take for breakfast? I will take three pieces of croissant in a cup of cafe au lait. How about you? I'll try this shoe pastry, a small piece of pie and meringue on top of it, and a cup of affigato with tins of brown decorated on its surface. Have you noticed some words with difficult pronunciation? Now, going back to the questions I raised a while ago, why do Filipinos mispronounce a lot of English words? Number one, learning words from reading. You know, sometimes we learn words from reading, not from hearing them used. We see a word and just guess its uh, pronunciation, which may be wrong. Someone who reads a lot may learn a lot of words he or she has never heard pronounced correctly. Thus, it is really easy for us non-native speakers to mispronounce an English word. For example, P-E-R-F-E-C-T. This word is very simple, yet its pronunciation is quite complicated because it can be pronounced in different ways depending on the use. If you simply describe person, place, or thing, we say perfect or perfect. For example, she is a perfect model. This is a perfect place. But if you talk about uh, the tense of a verb that shows actions that has happened in the past before another time or event, we say perfect tense or perfect tense. Not perfect, but perfect tense. And um, if you simply describe the action to improve something to become as good as it can be, we say perfect or perfect. For example, you can perfect your pronunciation by constant practice. Perfect or perfect. Perfect or perfect. And perfect or perfect number two silent reading you know in classroom sometimes we are not allowed to read anything allowed by our teachers to avoid disturbing other classmates but the thing is silent reading does not allow us to practice our speech uh, organ particularly the tongue, mouth, lips, and the vocal cord. With the absence of the speech organ, we lack proper articulation, and many times we tend to forget pronunciation drill while reading. As learners, we must be given opportunity to read articles aloud. So, teachers, please allow your students to read something aloud. Number three, 
habit of consulting dictionary only for the meaning rather than pronunciation. When you look for the meaning of certain words, we normally focus on what it represents or expresses, but we don't pay attention to the pronunciation entries using phonetic symbols. After serving our purpose, we close the dictionary, don't we? Take a note of International Phonetic Alphabet. The standard phonetic symbols accepted by all languages uh, and used in pronunciation entries. Some dictionaries observe the standard symbols, others have their own set of symbols. Thus, you need to get familiar with the IPA which I plus on the screen. Number four, dominance of lingua franca and the mother tongue. Lingua franca is a, any language that is widely used as a means of communication among speakers of other languages. For example, in the Philippines, uh, we use uh, Filipino to communicate with other citizens from other islands. And mother tongue refers to the language first learned by a child and it is a language from which another has evolved. On the issue of lingua franca and the mother tongue, we always assume or articulate the pronunciation ourselves following the sound pattern of the common language in the region. For example, Filipino. In the first learned language or the mother tongue, for example, Tagalog, Cebuano, Waray, Ilocano, and so on. We assimilate the perceived sounds from these languages in articulating the sounds of the English words or syllables, which should not be the case because Filipino and other Philippine languages have very limited vowel sounds. We only have A, E, E, O, U. Unlike the English, the five vowel letters can produce more than 20 vowel sounds. Twelve of which are monophthongs, nine diphthongs, and five diphthongs. Please do not assimilate the sound of Filipino vowels in producing English vowels because uh, our language is considered as a syllable-timed language, not stress-timed language. Olive. Number five, mother of spoken language. It refers to the way we listen to the words spoken around us. Mispronunciation happens when we follow inappropriate speech models. In the Philippine context, language teachers are non-native speakers of English and have various local or regional accents due to highly multilingual nature of the country. Hence, notable differences uh, from um, the American English are observable despite the fact that we have been following the forms of American English with the infusion of British English via neighboring countries since post-colonial period. As a consequence, inappropriate manner of producing different sounds is inevitable and can influence students' oral communication skills and uh, fluency. Besides, since most speakers of Philippine English have never been to anywhere outside the country, and since we live on different uh, islands, these factors limit our social interaction with other English-speaking people across uh, the globe. This is the main reason 
why we speak strange English according to foreign observers. To improve communication, what we need is somebody whose articulation is at least near native speaker level. But thanks be to God, with the power of social media now and the availability of language training centers uh, nationwide, we can resolve the issue on phonology and help us become better speakers of English. Question number one for five hour play. Name at least one member of Team Aswang or Team Tulungan. I have chatted many times. One member of Team Tulungan or Team Aswang. I have chatted many times. Please do not nominate yourselves, nominate others. Good luck. Now, here are words that are commonly mispronounced by many of us. I categorize these words into monosyllabic words or one syllable words, disyllabic or two syllable words, and polysyllabics or words with more than two syllables. Common mistake, the definite article, the or the. We always assimilated the TH with the sound, which is not correct. So don't say D or D, but Z and Z. When to say Z or Z, as I mentioned in my previous blog, if the definite article is followed by a word beginning a vowel sound, then we use D. For example, D egg. But the when the definite article is followed by a word beginning consonant. For example, the car. The car. You don't say the car or the car, but the car. The car. Now, this word is also mispronounced. Prayer or prayer. Most of us always say prayer. It's not prayer, but prayer or prayer. Same case with mayor or mayor. Don't say mayor or mayor. Mayor or mayor. Now let's have a disyllabic or two syllable words. Assume or assume. Chocolate or chocolate, but don't say chocolate or chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate. Next, cocoa or cocoa. Don't say cocoa. It's cocoa or cocoa. Color or color. Don't say color. It's color or color. Culture or culture. Don't say culture. It's culture or culture. Next, 
cupboard or cupboard. Don't say cupboard. It's cupboard or cupboard. Debris or debris or debris. But don't say debris. It's debris, debris, debris. Epitome, epitome, or epitome, epitome. Don't say epitome. It's epitome or epitome. Next, genre, or genre, or in French, uh, genre. But don't say genre, genre or genre. It's genre, genre or genre. Next, genre, genre or genre in French. But don't say genre or genre. Next, impious, impious, or impious, impious. Next, lichen or lichen. Now, this word has a lot of uh, variation. It can be often, 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 often. In British is often, often. Next is a uh, pizza. Don't say pizza. Double said in Italian is t, t pizza. Next, purpose, purpose or purpose. Purpose, but don't say purpose. Uh, it's purpose or purpose. Next, theory or theory, but don't say theory. It's theory or theory. Question number two. How do foreign observers describe the spoken Philippine English? How do foreign observers describe the spoken Philippine English? And that question is for 10 hour play. Good luck. Now we have polysyllabic or words with more than two syllables. Banana, banana or banana, banana. But don't say banana. It's banana or banana. Next, category or category but don't say category the primary accent falls on the first so we say category or category next ceremony ceremony or ceremony ceremony but don't say ceremony it's ceremony uh, it's a ceremony or ceremony
Next, uh, this one uh, has uh, more than one variations. Convertible or comfortable or comfortable or comfortable. But don't say comfortable, but it's uh, comfortable or comfortable. But don't say comfortable, it's comfortable or comfortable or comfortable or comfortable. Education, education or education, education. But don't say education. It's education or education. Next is evacuation. Evacuation, not evacuation. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur or entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. But don't say entrepreneur. It's entrepreneur or entrepreneur. Hyperbole. Hyperbole or hyperbole. Hyperbole. But don't say hyperbole. Infamous. Infamous. Don't say infamous, but infamous, infamous. Inseparable, inseparable. But don't say inseparable, it's inseparable. Interpret, interpret or interpret, interpret. But don't say interpret. It's interpret or interpret. Margarine. Margarine or margarine. Margarine. But don't say margarine. It's margarine or margarine. Multitude multitude or multitude multitude but don't say multitude it's multitude or multitude prerogative prerogative or prerogative prerogative And the last one, restaurant, restaurant, or restaurant, restaurant, but don't say restaurant, it's a restaurant or restaurant. Now, it's your turn. Good luck. Question number three. What is the topic for today's segment? What is the topic for today's segment? And that is for 15 hour play. Good luck. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Once again, this is Uber Jordan inviting everyone to stay tuned to this channel. If you want to know more about the mispronouncers in different areas, and if you want to be fluent in English, grammatically and phonetically, 
please hit like, leave your comment below, share this video with your family, friends, and students, and if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell icon for the latest updates from my channel. Always remember this saying, practice makes perfect. So if you want to perfect your pronunciation, practice, practice, practice. Because uh, only practice can make you perfect.